Hey YouTube, uh, Alex here. And so in today's video, this was actually a, a request from a couple of you guys. I got some emails asking me why and how I set up my Animal Plastics T8 corn snake enclosure. To get straight to the point, guys, there are hundreds of videos on YouTube of how to set up a corn snake enclosure. I'm not gonna be another one of those people that do that just because there's so many resources that you guys can already find for that. What I wanted to do with this video is sort of explain how and why I am using this enclosure by Animal Plastics. Uh, this is their T8 model cage. So it's 48 inches long, 24 inches in depth and 12 inches in height. And you guys have seen this cage in a couple other videos that I've done on corn snakes, as well as how I set up the probe for the Pro Products Radiant Heat Panel right here that maintains the temperatures in this enclosure. Pretty much in summary, this houses my coming up on seven year old albino corn snake who's het for motley. Uh, the only reason I know that he's het for motley is because I did a breeding loan with him last year and that would be chili. So you guys haven't seen him in a while. Here he is. He's never one to sit still for the camera. So it's kind of hard to see like how big he's gotten. Definitely not the little corn snake that was in the uh, the video I did a while back. He had pretty much outgrown his tub setup that you guys saw in one of my videos, and now he gets to live his adult life of luxury in this beautiful four foot enclosure. And so that's the one thing too that I wanna emphasize here is that uh, I'm not a, you know, a major corn snake breeder. So you'll see like a lot of breeders use sea serpents rack system or something when they're housing a large quantity of corn snakes. And that's sort of what I wanted to highlight in this video is I have three corn snakes myself. They are all personal pets. I'm not breeding these on a large scale. And so I really like to try and just offer them really large naturalistic setup. Again, I apologize if you're seeing Chili go in and out of frame. It's because the moment I lose him in here, he will not be coming back out so easily. But with that in mind, I wanted to go over sort of the aspects of this enclosure and pretty much um, what I do to make sure that Chili has a really awesome and, you know, happy, healthy life in this cage. So uh, as I said, it is 48 inches long, so that's four feet, which for Chili, he can pretty much stretch out the entire length of the cage. Uh, I'll insert a photo of him right now. He loves to get up on the ledge in the back, and it's, it's kind of cool to see him fully stretched out, working his muscles up there. Cutting back to the video now, you know, you can see he's got all sorts of room to move around. He's got a nice big water bowl that he can soak in if he so chooses. Lots of uh, fake foliage to get under for substrate. Uh, you guys know me. This is the Reptichip Premium Coconut Substrate. I just, I like what Reptichip does as a business. And then I also am just a big fan of uh, the product in general. So I guess what I'll do is I'll cut back to this side. You can kind of see Chili poking his head right over here. Just like any snake setup, you want to have a hot side and a cold side. So we'll start with the hot side. Pretty much whenever we are setting up a snake enclosure, the hot side is where they go to heat up. Cool side is where they go to cool down. Reptiles are ectothermic organisms, which means they do not generate their own internal body heat like dogs, cats, and humans, which are mammals or endotherms. And so because of that, you have to offer a thermal gradient. And so that's what the heat panel is used for. On top of the shelf, when the heat panel's running, it'll stick around like 86 sometimes upwards of 94 degrees depending on how much energy is required to get this terrarium up to the ideal temperature and then as you can see this is why I'm a really big fan of these heat panels is because instead of like say a, a heat lamp where it's a focused spot what we're doing is we're allowing Chili to have the ability to completely coil up on the ledge and heat his entire body all at once. And I really like that. He definitely seems to appreciate it. Again, I'll insert a photo. He'll actually coil up. So that way, instead of say like a heat pad where it might be say like eight by 12 inches, you know, this is a four foot cage that radiant heat panels around 18 inches front to back and roughly 20 inches long. So he can firm a form a perfect coil on the shelf on the piece of driftwood or under the driftwood so that way he can choose if he wants to heat his entire body or part of his body the idea is that by using this style of heating we're giving him options which would provide a lot more than using say like a halogen spot lamp or a, a basic heat pad that's only six by eight inches or so you're really wanting to give him the most floor space surface area to heat up accordingly and like i said you want to provide that in a variety of methods and so that's why i've got the driftwood here i frequently catch him just sitting out on here sometimes he'll sit under it this is actually hollow under here so he'll expose part of his body to heat up and again 
he might just want to heat up uh, fully because I don't provide any heat at night to give him a nighttime drop and he'll let naturally go out and bask in the morning and in the late evenings before that temperature cools down again. So that's sort of how the hot side set up and again foliage and stuff like that so Mr. Chili can do his thing. Aside from the hot side of the cage, we can move to the cold side. Here, he's got a nice big water bowl that he can soak in, some more foliage. You can't see it too well on camera, and I should have mentioned this on the hot side, but I actually have two of these Zilla Durable Dens under the shelves, so that way he can have a hide directly under the shelf and avoid the LED light. The one thing that I love, and also um, kind of got a little bit upset of when I ordered this cage, is I didn't realize the LED lights that Animal Plastics uh, sets up, is they run the entire length of the cage. Chili being an albino, he doesn't have any melanin. And so because of that, his eyes in theory are a little bit more photosensitive to bright light. Um, and so that's why with the shelf as well as hides on both sides, that allows him to completely escape the LED light during the day if he chooses. I typically leave the LED light on for 12 hours a day. I haven't noticed any issues. So I would like to think that given his morph, if you will, being an albino, um, that this is an appropriate light cycle for him and also an appropriate appropriate amount of shade so he can escape the light. And then the one thing that a lot of people also ask me about in these videos is my little sky hide up here. So this is manufactured by Reptile Basics and there's actually a piece of PVC right there that goes around the entire rim of the hide. I can try and get the camera up there so you guys can see it if it'll focus. Uh, you can see the screw right here. So this is actually a piece of PVC that the hide like can slide out of. And what this does is it just gives him again, more options. The idea with a natural six snake setup like this is to make sure that Chili has got access to a wide range of temperatures. Now he's actually trying to show off to you guys. I'll just get the camera on him briefly. But pretty much with the coal side is that instead of just having one hot hide and one cold hide, you'll see that he's got the ledge, he's got the sticks, he's got the sky hide, he's got the leaves. In his enclosure, he's probably got 12 different hiding areas, all which are going to have different levels of humidity, all that are going to have different temperatures. That way it gives him the most options as far as trying to get that desired uh, body temperature, whether he wants to be hot, cool, or everything in between. You guys will probably have caught that I also mentioned humidity. Typically in a nice PVC cage like this, I only give it a good spray down when he's trying to shed his skin. Uh, and that ensures that he sheds in one nice perfect piece. But honestly, having a large water bowl like that, that he can soak in if he wants to, he rarely soaks. I've never actually caught him soaking. So I, I'd imagine he's done it once or twice, but I haven't personally seen him do it. But either way, the amount of surface area of this water evaporating into the cage is gonna help maintain that humidity level for him. If he wants to seek out an area with more humidity, I also have got this uh, old, this is a Zoomed Repti shelter. And so it's actually got damp coconut bedding in there. So that way, if he wants, he can completely coil up in there and have access to a nice humid microclimate. And again, typically when he's in shed, I just miss the cage down. So that way he has no shedding issues whatsoever. In summary guys, that is how I set up this Animal Plastics T8 enclosure for my corn snake. You can see it's a really nice cage. I love Animal Plastics as a company. I have a lot of PVC enclosures from them, uh, including some that I use for like my water dragons. So they work great for corn snakes. Again, if you're in a situation like me where you've just got a single pet snake, you want to deck it out and provide a lot of options, both as far as temperature and humidity gradients, I really can't recommend uh, this cage enough. I'm not sponsored by Animal Plastics. I've just been using their products for a few years and I really like them. And I'd like to say the, uh, the health and happiness of Chili speaks for itself, given he's been living in this cage for just over a year now. So without further ado, I'm Alex with Alex's Agamids. If you want to subscribe to the channel, feel free to uh, click the notification bell. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. That is in the description down below. Take care and have a good rest of your day. Adios.